Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas. There's a video that's been circulating on the internet for many years where a guy takes a evacuated tube, solar water heating tube like this, and drips water on the nipple and it boils away. With any luck, I'll be able to show you why you don't want to do this, and I'll also be able to show you the interior, what makes up a vacuum tube like this. Our temperatures are very hot with no solar reflectors for now lens. This has been sitting out in the sun for a few hours. Now all we need is some sort of distraction. There it is. A little bit of excess water dripping inside of the hot vacuum tube and bam! Keep in mind, I have eye protection on. A typical vacuum tube like this consists of clear borosilicate glass continuously form creating an inside chamber with a dark surface or absorber that allows sunlight to enter the outer part of the glass and then collect on the inside. Because there's a vacuum around, it keeps the heat from escaping out this way, transferring most of the heat to whatever's inside. Even though the material inside here is very hot, I can touch the outside layer. It's just like a regular thermos that you had. Hot coffee on the inside, outside is nice and cold. These tubes are some of the most efficient ways of collecting sunlight and transferring it to water. For maximum efficiency, a tube that has water inside directly in contact with the inner layer is the best option. The problem with that is that these tubes can only hold about 7 psi. So if you put a 40 pound pressure water system to it, it'll snap the tube. Solar water heaters using mini tubes like this, up to 20, have come up with a rather ingenious way of taking care of that problem with the pressure. This copper piece, it's a sealed copper tube all the way down and there's an exchange fluid in there that rises and falls bringing the heat up to the highest point. This part is inserted into the water tank and this is what comes in contact with the water. It's not the most efficient way of doing it but it does work very well. The one problem with this is that they use aluminum fins makes them very lightweight, easy and expensive but because the aluminum fins don't transfer all of the heat the inside of this tube can get extremely hot. If you live in a place like Florida where we are, you get flash thunderstorms that pop up out of nowhere and that water can get down inside of there, one or two drops, enough to shatter the tube. As an option to the fin, I've tested other materials like zinc pellets, metal pellets, and I've also tested dry sand. The problem with zinc pellets and metal pellets is that they tend to oxidize or rust. White beach sand, completely dry, seems to work the best. If it does get a little damp, it's still enough to eventually evaporate away. First up is our dry sand. Our dry sand is, it doesn't look hot right now, but that's 280 degrees. Oh wow, 295. It's pretty impressive. Pour some water on there, just a little bit. <laughs> so even though that sand doesn't look hot, you can see that it has no problem instantly boiling, flash boiling water. In the test that I've done, the white beach sand inside, just because it's white, that usually reflects sunlight away, but it never sees sunlight. It's just touching the surface. It gets within 10 degrees Fahrenheit of what the metal fins do. The other advantage to using something with thermal mass like beach sand is that in the evening time, when hot water is mostly used, there is some thermal storage inside of there, so it continually adds heat to the water tank even when it's being used after the sunset. So this is the tube. So after three and a half hours with no sunlight, the sand has still stored. Hundred and ninety three. If you have a water system or some solar tubes and you want to test it, try dry beach sand and see what results you get. Keep in mind that if you have a professionally installed system, one that somebody charged you to install, if you take the fins out and put beach sand in, you'll probably void the warranty. So this is something you 
for someone who bought it off the internet, maybe had some tube shatter because rain gets in there, this is a good option for it. Always remember never to put any liquids or oil or food, material, whatever inside of an evacuated tube that's been sitting out in the sun for more than a few minutes because the inside surface can get enough to cause it to shatter. If you do have boiling water in here, like say you put water in, set it out in the sun, put a parabolic mirror on it to speed it up or a Fresnel lens, when the water's just below the boiling point, something interesting can happen. If you agitate it just enough, the water can come up to the portion of the tube that has not been in contact with the water. This raises the heat of it drastically and causes water to come flashing out of it. So what you want to make sure is you always be careful when you handle anything that's been in this. If you're making tea with one of these, just be careful. This is the basics of solar evacuated tubes. There's more information on these evacuated tubes on our website, greenpowerscience.com, including ways of properly using a Fresnel lens, parabolic mirror, or trough collector to drastically increase the efficiency. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.